our real position is one of becoming more aware of what is that has visibly bound us to certain areas within our own real awareness and the creativeness we have used to place ourselves in limited positions. This is part of the hidden key to the religious orders, as I've explained. Their idea is for one to need a father or mother godhead figure in order that a person gives service and adoration in the form of an authoritative worship, which perfectly limits one's ability to do for themselves and become self-sufficient. The priests who discovered this in their early dawn of history on earth also encourage the primitive tribes to obey certain rules and follow set patterns of rituals and rites. The codes and laws of each individual religious group have a positive and negative effect, which are under the rule of the Kalam forces. That is, you are promised a reward provided you obey the codified rules of the church. However, if you are at the neglected at all neglectful of the rules, you are promised a certain punishment. Christianity says you can burn it for eternity. Some of the Hindu religions say you can be returned to the lower forms, such as an animal. Other religions have you sent back into a stone or mineral form. The reality is the real you can regain a position into the real universes at any time and be free. Peter and I happened to come across some Jehovah's Witnesses at the airport. And I never noticed this, but they have a free speech area at the airport, just like uh, we used to do for the corporation at, in San Jose. So we went over there and talked to them for a while. And uh, the, the two ladies were very open and receptive. And we were starting to talk about dreams and passing on and we connected with the word awareness you know that they were they were aware that awareness is important and then this other guy comes over he they were changing shifts so this other fellow comes over and was listening to us and right away he comes over and with the bible and starts uh, quoting the bible and we were talking about Actually, I shared with my my former wife passed on recently, and you know I told him that she came to me and uh, you know, acknowledged me, and I acknowledged her when the, she was on the other side. And he comes over and says, you know, when reads from Ecclesiastes that you know when you're dead, you're dead. <laughs> when you're dead, you're you know you're asleep basically until until the Savior comes and wakes everybody up from the dead, and then they live happily ever after on the earth. That's kind of their Jehovah's Witness position. So it was just kind of interesting. But in the meantime, we do have that opportunity, if ever, you know, to do a, a sign up for a reservation for his place at the free speech area at the airport, San Diego. Just wanted to mention that. This is a pretty rough way of saying that you have to behave and get along with the church or you will be an outcast. And to be an outcast from the church is a social evil, so they have decided. So here is part of the fear that is established and stays with a person for lifetimes. What this amounts to is pretty simple. It is a socialization of the various groups of people in this world to be controlled by many forms of fear. The great reality is always pure and has nothing to do with emotional and mental inadequacies, aberrations, and the worshipping ritualism of the determined minds that have personally created a dominance over others. If you do understand this, then you know that religions are hardly anything more than man-made and that the priests are simply appointed by themselves and their friends in some form of political position from a historic takeover. The long history and tradition behind a family, church, or state seems to ensure that it is right 
which is absurd. Buddhism, which is the oldest of the modern religions, is far from real truth. Although it has noted grand history and tradition, means nothing at all in the real universe is of pure freedom. This is also true of Christianity, Confucianism, the Upanishads, Upanishads, and a few hundred more of the same. You will find that you cannot put your finger on anything until you adapt the viewpoint of being the reality of itself. When you learn the balance of your being within it, and it within the center of yourself, then you are not questioning your relationships with people, nor concerned with social institutions, forms and functions of human groups that are lost in a drudgery tribulation. You are free from the invented obstructions of immature souls that have not as yet come into the real light at this time. Your greatest accomplishment is to perceive the more so position of being real and develop a genuine love for all that is. When you have discovered that the social conscious is not part of the real you, you are freed from karma and reincarnation and drudgery of a world that has decided to nine to five you into your grave. This is where you instantly drop the mind, body, and enter into the seventh level of pure and brilliant light and a true sincerity and love that you cannot even imagine possible. There is something else you will find to be true, and that is the lower lords of the various levels throughout the psychic grand division are no longer in power as far as you, can, you are concerned. You now have the great ability to surpass them altogether. They will continue to rule those lost souls who need the father-mother symbol to lean on. But for you two, this is no longer true. It is now that you have outgrown the president of your country and he needed you for your support, but you no longer need him. This being so, you are now freely independent and you can come and go in the unseen worlds. The lack of a social conscience does wonders for your being. The real guides have little conscience toward the social virtues and ethics of this world, factors which the priests and ministers of the church seem to hold so dearly for their rulership. The real you cares little about social conscience, while on the other hand, the feminine principle is the promoter and progressor of this aspect of earthly life. This is why law and order is a prominent part of any society. No real guide will let himself get entangled with a set of laws on any level. Law and order, as I have told you previously, are a negative system to burden you into staying unaware. You must understand that law and order survives from the mental heavens down to this earthly plateau only. Until you enter the invisible universes and progress upward, where you reach the ultimate, the all is, you will have to deal with the restrictions set by others. You learn to live in this world of others, but only with them, but not of it. The formless thing I call the all is, or the formless one, fills the very ethers of all worlds in a fluid state and is a life-giving sound that we know as the true reality. It has no laws and no interest in anything except to obey the will of those who use it. The real part of itself can only be useful with certain attributes and intent, along with very finely tuned perception of what it is. This is where the long journey to become aware of it, it lies. The two of you have been instructed by the real guides for lifetimes, referring to Duane and Paul, and not just this one. Your training, because of this present day, is very intensive at this time. Beyond the seventh level, it becomes so sensitive that even the decidedness of your will has an effect, and it rushes instantly to obey. 
The real guides who have entered into those worlds know this and become sensitively careful of their feelings. Those humans in the lower levels have no understanding of this. These higher levels of the real universes are not worlds of thought, but rather of feeling and assumption. <clears throat> working with that grand and hidden quality called the real imagination. There are two basic qualities that you must preserve in order to be an inhabitant of the real universes. In the psychic and physical worlds, man rushes from event to event and is controlled by circumstances. In the higher levels, the real you becomes the controller of your own destiny. As Henley said in his poem, I am the master of my fate, the captain of my soul. This is true when you reach the real universes. You must take great care to manage the imagination, lest it run wild and send you hurling back into the lower worlds of time and space. This is why there must be a great preparation before entering into reality. Both of you are to let the world know what I'm sharing with you. And be sure to include the basic factor which I give you, and that is that man is a social animal when his real awareness occupies the body. That when he lifts it out of this world into the upper stratum and drops the little social conscience altogether, he becomes a true being with the true reality itself. If I have never given you anything other than this, nor give you another piece of truth, this would suffice for the rest of your days on the earth world. But like all real beings, you will never be happy until sound and light are endless. They will be happy until reaching the end of the journey. Yet listen. The real universes of sound and light are endless, for there will always be more than what there seems to be. You will never find its ending. It is too vast for words and feelings and also your imagination. The real sound and light is the working instrument for that which we call the great reality. What is the great reality? That which we call the all is is an unknown quality. There have been many mystics such as Plotinus, Eckhart, St. Teresa, St. John, Jesus, and many others who never got near the great reality. They believed that their mystical experiences got them near it, but they hardly touched the real universes, if at all. These mystics, as well as those who wrote the Bible, the Buddhist texts, and the Upanishads, Nishads mainly believe in authority. In the holy works of the Bhagavad Gita, there is written a line which goes something like this. Worship me with a leaf, a flower, but worship me. This is what Krishna, the Christ of India, says to Arjuna, his disciple. This is authority speaking once again to the masses. That has nothing to do with the wonderfulness of reality itself. The all is. Thank you.